Up next, we've got a women's flyweight bout between two American fighters, Aaron Blanchfield and Sarah Alper. Alper's 30 years old. She's 9-5 and five overall, 3-2 and two in her last five fights. She's 5-4 in height with a 63-inch reach. Currently, she's just plus 300 on the money line, whereas Aaron Blanchfield, the 22-year-old young prospect, is a minus 400 on the money line. She's 6-1 and one overall, 5-4 and four in height with a 68-inch reach. So, yeah, Blanchfield's a big favorite here. She's 22 years old. If you know anything about her, she's got a great BJJ game, trains with the Renzo Gracie tribe up there in New York City. She's from the East Coast, has been doing mixed martial arts since she was a kid, like literally like since she was like four or five years old, got into some different types of martial arts. By the time she was 13, she knew, I want to fight professionally. That's what I want to do. Um, she's not just a fighter, though. She's actually studying biology at Montclair State. Not sure if that's a master's program, a PhD program. I've heard some different things, but um, comes from a good family, so she's got some support. Maybe allows her to train full-time and not have to work a full-time job, which is cool. But she's got a bright future. Great at the BJJ aspect of her game. We don't have any striking numbers here on her or takedown numbers on her. As for Sarah Alper, we do have some numbers, and they're not great. Um, they're probably coming from her first uh, UFC fight when she fought against... Um, uh, Clark recently. Anyway, so for our part, she's averaging just over two strikes per minute, but she's absorbing almost five punches per minute. That's not a good ratio. Her takedown defense is okay. She's averaging just under two, three takedowns per 15-minute fight. Her takedown defense, eh, 50% takedown defense. Now, according to Tapology, look, the, the cat's out the bag, right? Aaron Blanchfield's a really good prospect. She's probably going to win this fight. She could probably finish it by submission. She could win it by decision. Uh, she may even be able to hurt Sarah Palmer or Alper. So, Tapology reflects that 93% of the votes are coming in here for Blanchfield. Let's talk here about Sarah Alper first. I don't want this to sound mean. It's just my opinion. You know, who the hell cares what I think, right? Um, but Sarah Alper probably shouldn't be in the UFC right now. Um, and at the age of 30, um, I don't think, you know, her 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 uh, her time is going to be very long in the UFC. Let's just put it that way. So how did it happen? She fights Shana Young back in 2019 in the Contender Series, right? That's like the last, uh, yeah, that's the last contender series before the plague hit the whole world, right? So 2019, August, around that time or whatever, she fights um, she fights uh, Shayna Young. And look, this is going to sound mean, but I just got to say it. As soon as the fight is over, okay, she goes ahead and submits Shayna Young. She does a great job. She gets into position because round one was like sticky. Round one, Sarah Alper comes out. She's fresh. She's excited. She's a big girl. She carries like, she's got like softball player kind of body, if you know what I'm saying beer league um but if she gets you on the ground she could lay on you that's that's her game plan so she tries to wrestle with young but young does a good job by the end of the round it's like sarah's getting tired and young's landing more of the cleaner punches landing some knees actually takes um young actually takes sarah to the ground so as the end of round one finishes off i'm looking at the young girl and thinking she looks pretty good and physically i hate to be that guy but like physically she looks good she passes that test too you know like the marketing test so you get into round two, fight ends, let me just get to the point, the fight ends with um, Alper just getting a nice position, get back position on the ground, slips in a, a well actually let me let me make sure I, I mention this, Shayna Young did something so silly, she's on the ground, she has Blanchfield's arm, so she can't, Blanchfield can't do a rear naked choke, and she lets go of it to put two hands down to push herself up off the ground, and as soon as she does that, Sarah Alper s slips in her forearm, Gets the rear naked choke, and seconds later, we've got ourselves a tap. So it was like one of the dumbest things Shana Young could have done. But right as it happens, you know, the camera pans to Dana White. And he's doing that clap of like, oh, shit. I wanted to give the contract to the other girl. Oh, he, like, he, on his face, he's clapping like, oh, yeah, it's great. That's great. I got it. He's like, I can't not give a contract to Sarah Alpar because she just submitted her. She finished her. It's a women's fight. So it was like the smile. It's a, it's a smile worth a thousand you know, words type of thing or, or meaning a thousand words. It's just brilliant. And so as that unfolds, you see Young is there on the mat. She's disappointed. Of course, Alpar is happy. She's thrilled. Um, she's polite. She's in the ring. You know, She just seems like a nice person overall. She's from Texas, engaged to a person who does, or I think they might be married now, to a trainer. She's into athletics. 30 years old, you know, I think she's, look, she's she's riding this train as far as she can ride it, you know. Unfortunately, though, after that fight, now she gets the contract, and she goes and fights Jessica Rose Clark. If you don't know who that is, that's okay. You're not a moron. It's a new name for me. She's kind of new on the scene. She's not much of a veteran. But, man, when you watch that fight, you start having to, like, do the thing of, like, looking between your your, your fingers, like, oh, can they please stop this? Sarah Alpar takes a beating of all beatings. There's a there's a horrible knee involved in there that's legal. It's totally a legal knee. The ref like stops it for a second. They call to replay. Then he's like, no, no, no. It was legal knee, actually. It's okay. Let's resume the fight. You've got Buffer coming in the ring. He's got the microphone ready to call it. 
after the fight, the commentator mentions a rule in UFC that if they go to a replay, I'm not, I could be wrong on this. If they go to replay, though, I guess it's a rule, and it may be UFC rule. I'm not sure if it's a North American mixed martial arts rule or whatever. But if they go to replay, at that point, the fight cannot be resumed. The replay is just used to confirm whatever they're looking for, whether was it a legal knee, um, was it not an illegal knee. But at that point, the referee now needs to – the fight's over. He's supposed to make a determination. Instead, <laughs> Alper takes this knee from Jessica Clark that just smashes her. I'll, look at this fight. The link is in the description. Um, she's all broken up, and the ref comes over and has the nerve to be like, okay, Sarah, listen, that was a legal knee. Um, are you okay to continue? And Alper, just being a tough tough lady she is, she's like, yeah, I'm good. Goes back in there, takes another two minutes of just a beatdown. He's got Jessica Clark in there looking like Shevchenko. She's got her looking like the best in the world. And no offense to Jessica Clark, but Jessica Clark's not that good. She's like a 9-6, and 10-6 and six type of fighter here. Um, so Sarah just gets her shit beat up from pillar to post. Welcome to the UFC. It's her first UFC fight. And look, there's levels to this stuff, man. Um, there's levels to this. Put it that way. When you start making mistakes technique wise, when you start going up against people that are better than you, you make a few mistakes. Next thing you know, you got a young fighter like Sarah Alpart. Well, young in terms of coming to UFC. She wants to come in there and prove herself. She wants to, doesn't want to give up. She shows a lot of heart. She never threw the towel in. She took a beatdown that she may never recover from. And then to add insult to injury, Jessica Rose Clark, after the fight, was like apologizing to Sarah because she's like, you have a wedding in three weeks. Like, yeah, her wedding. Sarah Alpar's wedding was three weeks after that. And she looked like um, she looked like she was, a, 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 you know, like some kind of a, <laughs> a, 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 a side actor in some kind of a zombie movie. Like, she literally was all broken up. Her face was a mess. So... Look, that's what happens here. She sneaks in the back door on this Sha- on, the, on the win against Shana Young. It was almost by mistake that it happened. Dana feels the obligation to give her the contract. He does. She comes in here and just gets her shit beat up. Now she's coming in against Aaron Blanchfield. I don't think it's going to be that kind of beating. At least I hope it's not. I don't want to see Sarah just take another beating like that. That was bad. Aaron's probably going to submit her. Aaron's got a very good ground game, very good submission, very good in the clinch. Sarah likes to fight in the clinch. You know what I mean? So... For Sarah, for Sarah Alper, she's going to want to clinch up at times, too, and look for takedowns. That works right into Aaron Blanchfield's wheelhouse. The one thing Blanchfield has done in the past that she's got to be careful of, she can't work from her back for an entire round and then expect to win those rounds. Now, if she's getting a submission from her back, okay, all's well, ends well. But she cannot stay on her back for an extended period of time. That's why she lost to Tracy Cortez. She fought Cortez back in the day in Invicta. It was a split decision loss. Some people argued maybe Blanchfield won. Looking at the fight, look, Blanchfield had her moments. She almost ended the fight twice. She almost choked out Cortez twice. This is a girl who fought. That was back in, um, I want to say she was 20 or 19 years old when she fought that fight versus Tracy Cortez. Okay, Blanchfield's only 22. That was a few years ago, three years ago, I think. She was only 19 years old fighting against a 25-year-old or so, Cortez. So, look, this girl's legit, okay? She can go in there and hang with anyone. She's got pretty good hands. Her hands sometimes a little bit underrated. So, she can clock somebody. She can hurt somebody. She can hang with anyone in the division. Matter of fact, she was supposed to fight Norma Dumont, and that fight got canceled. kind of shows you the moxie of her and her people and how much confidence they have in her. Um, And that's another reason why she's been off. Now, if you look at her recent fight history, she hasn't fought since um, beating Sanchez in July of last summer. So basically it's been almost a year, a year and a few months and dominant performance. If you look at that film, again, the link is in the description. She dominates Sanchez. She dominates. She, she does exactly what, what Blanchfield can do to any fighter. That's not up to her level. She's going to take you to the ground own all the positions, be very heavy on you, look for different submissions, land some elbows too. On the feet, she's also dangerous. She landed some kicks. You know, she had Sanchez's head snap back a few times on the feet. So basically, look, she's well-rounded, she's young, she's up and coming, comes from a great camp, coming out of the Gracie, you know, uh, academy up there in New York City, as opposed to Sarah Alpar, who's training at Panda Kickboxing and Grappling, which can't even find any information about that gym, and also at Legacy Martial Arts. So just very small-time gyms. I, look, I commend all these fighters, but this is definitely a levels issue here. <laughs> you got a person who kind of snuck in the back door contender series, probably shouldn't even be here at this point. You got this girl here, Aaron Blanchfield, may contend for a title at some point in the next you know, few years. Definitely has that rematch coming up with Cortez at some point because if they rematch, with her being a little bit older, fight a little better game plan, she probably wins that fight. No offense to Cortez. I mean, Cortez almost got finished twice in that fight. That was 19-year-old Blanchfield. So, yeah, look, I like Blanchfield a lot. I did parlay her early in the week when she was at, like, minus 320. I parlayed her with a, a few different um, 
sports like baseball and whatnot and some other action, obviously MMA. Now it's we're, we're getting outside that area now. She's at minus 400. So I'm not big on parlaying things that are, you know, that chalky. Um, but, yeah, she's still parlayable for most people. She's going to win the fight. You know, you look at the film. Uh, do your own breakdown. Do your own research. There's really no different. There's no way that she loses this fight. Not even from the standpoint that well, uh, does Alpar, you know, does Alpar have like you know hand power? Cause she knock her out? No, 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 no. Listen, it's as simple as this. Simple as this. Sarah Alpar should not be in the UFC right now. Um, Dana and those guys threw her a real tough opponent in her first fight. It destroyed her. She's gonna lose this fight. Not surprised if they throw her another real tough one the next fight. It's just sort of like, let's get her get her out of here as soon as possible, and uh, let's move on. S but the second side of looking at it is that they need more fighters, right? They need fighters to fill these cards. Um, you know, So there's a lot of fighters with like 0-4, 0-5 records of recently. So maybe she hangs around. Um, but I just hope she doesn't take that beating that she took last time. It was too much. It's the kind of beating that maybe could change the whole course of your career. Um, concussion doesn't really cover it. Like broken nose, the whole nine. It was a damn beatdown. So anyway... Um, that's our summary here. Um, in terms of Blanchfield, you know what I want to see from her? I want to just see a balanced attack, and I want to see her finish the fight and do what she should do. She's a dominant fighter. She's at minus 400. Let's see her represent that minus 400, okay? The only thing that's missing from her her career right now is just more experience, get in there with more opponents, work her way up to the Dumont and those type of fighters, and let's see what she's made of. Um, but, yeah, I'm on I'm on the same – everyone's on Blanchfield. I don't think I, If you know somebody choosing um, – Sarah Alpar, or if you have a position to choose Sarah Alpar, please put in the comments. Um, again, as a reminder, we put links now into all of our video descriptions when we do breakdowns of prior fight videos of these fighters that we're talking about. So if you go in there, you'll find like the link to the Sanchez fight versus uh, Blanchfield. You'll, you'll find the link to you know Sarah Alpar fighting you know her contender series fight. The links are right there. Just click on them or copy and paste them. They're there for free. Hopefully, it helps you out. Um, and good luck on this break. Good luck on this fight if you're waging on it. All right, on to the next one.